Title, You Avoid Your Crush Written by Who is Tartaglia? Sino When you realize you've developed feelings for Sino, your best friend, you didn't know what to do. You couldn't tell him and ruin the friendship. That would be a disaster. And break your heart twice over once? To lose Sino as a friend, and again, to lose him as anything more. So you resign yourself to only have your heart broken once. You would avoid Sino until your feelings disappeared and keep your friendship with him intact. So that's exactly what you do. Everything was going fine too, until today. When Sino cornered you in a small alcove at the academia. Oh, Sino, funny seeing you here. Is it though? He asked. I do work here. We both work here. Actually, wouldn't it be stranger not to see me? Yes, it is, but Sino doesn't give you the time to respond before he continues. So, isn't it quite strange that I haven't seen you in what, a week or two now? Mm, yeah, I guess. Sino waits for more, but you give him nothing else. You fidget under the weight of his stare. He's observing you and you get the feeling like you are an experiment gone wrong. A conclusion miscalculated. Alright. Sino finally says, drawing out each syllable. He hesitates for a second before his face hardens and he says it. If you want to avoid and ignore me and pretend I don't exist, then you can avoid and ignore me and pretend I don't exist. I can stop you even if I hate it, but I would have at least wanted an answer as to why. Sino steps aside, then as if to tell you the conversation is gone, you are free to go, but you don't move. Can't move. You can't even think as Sino steps away, only his words ringing in your ears. I would have at least wanted an answer as to why. You owed him that much, at least. Wait, Sino. You take in a deep breath, and the words tumble out all at once. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for avoiding you. I, I really thought it was the best since I like you and you don't like me, and I didn't want to ruin our friendship, but it just ended up hurting the both of us, and... It was really stupid, but I didn't know what else to do, and uh, I'm really sorry. You look up when Sino doesn't say anything. He's still studying you, maybe even more intensely than before. Yes, he finally says. What? It was really stupid. Your face burns in embarrassment. Sino continues. Not just your plan, but that you thought we couldn't be friends even if I didn't feel the same way back. I know, I just... You abruptly cut off repeating what Sino just said in your head. You feel the same way back? Yes. I told you it was stupid not to realize I also like you, but until now, I didn't know you felt the same. Oh, and then again, because you don't know what else to say, I'm sorry. Sino allows a faint smile to grace his lips. I'll forgive you this time, YN. Honestly, I'm just relieved you don't hate me. I could never hate you. You say immediately, you didn't feel like that this week, or last. You look down again, disappointed that you allowed yourself to make Sino feel that way. He continues a little gentler. You are going to have to make it up to me. How? You ask, already knowing you would do anything. How about let me take you on a date? Granted that's something you probably want, but there, you can tell me everything. You wouldn't say no on any circumstances. But especially not when Sino's finally smiling at you again. Your relationship was off to a more than rocky start, but you find yourself hoping you can turn it around for the better. The Wanderer It was hard to avoid the Wanderer as you were adventuring over Tevat together, just the two of you. When you first realized your feelings for him and decided they would only prematurely end your expedition when he didn't feel the same back, you swore to keep them a secret. To do that, you would need to distance yourself from him, but that proved rather difficult and, well, extremely obvious. You stare to the flames of your small campfire. You sit opposite of the Wanderer, though on previous cold nights like this, you probably would have been right next to him. Similarly, you both would have trading stories and reminiscing about past adventures, not blanketed in this silence. It's close like those. Coupled with the equally obvious sign that you had feelings for him, that let the Wanderer discover your plan. The Wanderer leads back, resting on his elbows. The sun was setting and already the stars would come out. On clear nights like this, he would spend hours, maybe the whole night, pointing out the different constellations. Looking at you now, eyes boring in the fire, the Wanderer knows that's not going to happen tonight. At least, 
not if he doesn't do something about it. You are quiet tonight. He starts. He glanced up sharply at him. Yeah, I guess. He mumbled looking back down. Why? I'm just tired, I guess. Yeah, I might I might just go to bed early. Have you ever heard of the wanderer cuts you off? The praise absence makes the heart grow fonder. You pause. He can't possibly know, can he? I've known of it. So then you also know that your little idea of ignoring me in hopes that your feelings go away was doomed from the start, right? Startled, you look back up again. You meet the wanderer's gaze and like all the times before, you know there's no use in lying to him. Not when he already suspects the truth. Um, I... Yes. And I assume you didn't want me knowing because you didn't think I liked you back? Your silence is answer enough. Well, you're right. What? What? But then the wanderer cracks a smile and he's beside himself laughing. Oh, you should have seen the look on your face. You are the worst. But now there's a smile on your face. And you're also laughing at him. At your plan. At how despite your fears, the wanderer likes you back. It makes you feel giddy. Like you could spend the entire night laughing under the stars and looking at the wanderer now coming to sit next to you. You feel like you just might.